got the front end up by centering the jack underneath the cross member. I put a jack stand here for safety and we'll be using a 21 millimeter for these lug nuts. All right, the strut we'll be replacing is a Gabriel Guardian and they claim that it provides OE-like performance, original equipment. In addition to the struts, we may replace the bellows and the bump stopper. So this is the bellows that prevents moisture and dirt from getting on the strut shaft. And this is the bumper that prevents over compression of the strut. Now I'll try to remove this nut, but if the shaft starts spinning, I'll have to use a pass-through socket set. That's an aftermarket sway bar link. And that's a 15 millimeter nut that's on there. Let's see if it'll spin off. It's spinning on the uh, shaft, so I'm going to have to hold that shaft. It's a 5 millimeter hex socket that fits into the center shaft. Now, rather than turning the nut, I'll position the hex socket firmly in the shaft and turn it clockwise. a 22 millimeter impact socket to take the nut off. So we've got 14 millimeter nuts that secures the upper strut. This last one, before I take it off, I'm going to use my right hand to hold the strut from collapsing. Then I use my pry tool to get it separated. There we go. So before we start taking everything apart, just a mental note. You got these double arrows on the upper strut mount that's pointing towards the outside wheel, lining up with here. So I'm going to mount the spring compressor. I want to find the lowest point where I can mount it, which will clear this nut. Okay, so they're both mounted opposite each other and now we'll start compressing the spring. You want to make sure the threads have lubrication on them. Now to make things a little bit easier, we can add a third spring compressor right over here in between these two and it should relieve the majority of the tension. Okay, so if you notice the base of the strut, the spring is moving around, that means there's no more tension between the base of the strut and the strut mount. So now we can remove the strut nut up here. Now the whole assembly should just come right off. Now here's the old bump stopper. Let's compare it to the new one. See how much it's worn out? So there's good resistance going down. But there's no rebound pressure. So all the gas out of this strut is leaked out. So if you want to remove the upper spring seat to check the condition of the bellows, there's an arrow right here that we put a paint mark on and lined it up with the spring. Now we can take the spring seat off. And there's also an arrow over here that shows you the orientation of the bellows.
So here's the bellows. It hasn't split or broken apart. But if you want to replace it with a new one, it's really up to you. But this one is, hasn't deteriorated. If you think it could last the life of the next placement strut, then keep the old bellows. But I was able to get a new one at a discounted price, so I'm going to be throwing on a new one. This is the retainer for the shaft. Now the shaft is going up. Take this nut off, put the lower spring seat insulator. You can put the spring now on the strut. Make sure it's lined up right here in this little corner or notch. Now there's an arrow on the new bellows. I'll put a paint mark here. So this arrow on the bellows should line up with the green line over here. And this is the upper spring seat. We'll line that up with the new bellows. This bearing for the upper strut acts as a ball joint so that the strut can rotate on the top portion of the strut mount. So we put that on here. Now this is an important point. You have grooves in here that are supposed to line up with the grooves over here, the grooves on the shaft. You can rotate the shaft of the strut so that the groove lines up with the groove on the upper strut mount. I've got these grooves oriented horizontal and I've got the grooves here on the shaft oriented horizontally Okay, I'm going to put the nut on. It's difficult to do this as a one-man operation. The center of the shaft won't appear above the locking nut. So right now it's appearing above the locking nut, so that's it's lined up with the grooves. Now take this off. Okay. We have arrows up here to orient pointing out towards a wheel. Here, I'll put a little paint mark on it. So we can use a pry tool to rotate this. So this arrow lines up with this portion of the strut. Before we torque down the upper strut nuts, we'll secure the steering knuckle onto the new strut. We'll put a hydraulic jack underneath the steering knuckle to get the holes lined up. Okay. And there we go. We're done.